This video is being sponsored by Book of the Month. Hello friends! Today I will be sharing with you all of the books I want to read this spring. The birds are chirping, a little cottage core moment going on. However, the reality is it's actually still freezing where I live and that my heater is on full blast. However, my heart says it's spring and so does the title of this video. So, hi, my name is Lexi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be sharing with you all of the books that I would like to read this upcoming spring. Before we get started with the video, I would like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, which is Book of the Month. So Book of the Month is a fast growing online bookish subscription service for anybody who loves books. I love Book of the Month. I've been working with them now for over a year. And since it's Valentine's Day, let me just say Book of the Month, I have feelings for you. Their highly selective team go through hundreds of book titles every single month and they pick five titles for you to select. So every single month you can go to their website, you can choose which of the five titles sounds like your cup of tea, and then it is mailed to you and your door. And all of their titles that they pick slap. They specialize specifically in adult fiction and they have a wide range of genres from speculative to magical realism to thrillers, mysteries, contemporary and love stories. And sometimes they will pepper in a couple of YA titles as well. It's also completely risk-free as you can decide to skip a month if you are not vibing with any of the titles or you can choose a title from their backlist selection as well. And without further ado, let me go ahead and show you the titles for this month, the month of February. The Golden Couple by Greer Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. The twisty tale of a therapist with unconventional methods trying to unlock the mystery of a perfect marriage. Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Fa. This multi-generational epic traces the enthralling story of a mother and son who journey from China to America. Vladimir by Julia Mae Jonas. This darkly humorous exploration of gender and power follows a cantankerous female professor in the midst of a scandal. Don't Cry For Me by Danny Black. Here, a father uses letters to express his love for his estranged son. A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. Unexplained disappearances draw a reluctant hero back to his island home to confront spirits in this spellbinding tale. And A River Enchanted is going to be my personal pick of the month. And this month, if you would like to get your very first book box for only $9.99, you can actually use my code, which is Alexandra. All the links will be down in the description along with my code. And again, I could not recommend them more. I really, really love Book of the Month so much. So I think that's it. Uh, without further ado, let's get back into the spring TBR. So in 2022, I am trying something a little bit different. Instead of doing monthly TBRs every single month, I am actually transitioning into doing seasonal TBRs. So I will be putting out four different TBRs for the entire year. So grab yourself something cozy and let's get started. So the first book is a book that actually released last year and I really, really wanted to get to it, but now I am desperate to get to it. And that is The Inheritance of Orquidea Divina and this is by Zoraida Cordova. I really, really wanted to read this when it first released. However, I have recently become obsessed with the movie Encanto. And like, I'm not saying that lightly. I literally mean I am obsessed with it. Welcome to the family, Madrigal. This book is an adult literary fiction and specifically it deals with a lot of magical realism. And if you didn't know, Encanto is actually the perfect embodiment of magical realism. And I noticed a lot of similarities between that plot line and this. I mean, okay, that's a Disney movie. This is an adult literary fiction. However, there are actually quite a few similarities in the plot. And so like now I have to read this. This particular book is following Orquidea Divina, who is a person who actually has like a magical house similar to Encanto. And Orquidea Divina is the abuela of this family. One day she decides to call back all of her grandchildren and children so that she can tell them what they are going to inherit. That's kind of all I know, but it has a lot of similar vibes to me anyways, to the Encanto movie. I think we are following a multi-generation 
generational storyline. I feel like family is going to be a huge theme and I'm just really, really interested to see kind of what happens. It's also fairly short and I have a feeling I'm going to love this. The next book is another magical realism story. And this is a book that I actually purchased because of a local book club that I really desperately want to be a part of. So where I live, there is the world's cutest independent bookstore. It's called The Book and Cover. And they actually have several book clubs that I'm very interested in joining, but they have a book club called The Cocktail Book Club. They all meet at this cute little pub and the pub, it's so cute, you guys. I think it's called The Rose Comb. This pub actually makes a tailored cocktail to fit the book club's book club selection pick thing. And you go there, you get the cocktail, you discuss literary fiction, you become best friends with all these people, I think. I don't like this is I'm projecting now, but I am desperate to join this book club. So I went ahead and I actually purchased the book for the book club um, and then all of the slots filled up for the book club. So I don't actually get to participate this month. Let's take a moment of silence and mourn the friends that I could have made this month. However, I'm gonna read this anyways. I'm gonna have my own damn literary discussion. I'll drink my own cocktails. And then you can bet your bottom dollar, I will absolutely try to get a spot in this book club before they are all filled up again for March. Anyways, let me show you the book. So the book for their book club is called Violetta by Isabella Allende. Isabella Allende is a very, very prolific and very important voice in the Latin American community, but also just in the literary world in general. She wrote House of the Spirits, which is such a state in the magical realism genre. And I'm just really, really excited to pick this up. I don't know a lot going into this. All I know is that we are following our main character, Violetta, who has lived to be a hundred years old. And we're kind of following like the magical things that have happened in her life. The next book I have is actually a poetry book. I love a poetry moment, okay? But I've recently discovered a new booktube channel. I love this booktuber. Her name is Ebony. She goes by her pen name, EKG. I will link her channel down below. And she has gotten me so excited for so many different poetry collections. If you love poetry, highly recommend checking out her channel. But also if you don't, like know anything about poetry, I also highly recommend her channel. She's just gonna make you fall in love with poetry, okay? I purchased this book because she recommended it and that is Night Sky with Exit Wounds and this is by Ocean Vong. I have never read anything by Ocean Vong. I know that he has also written On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous, which so many booktubers have absolutely been raving about. I think Noelle was talking about that one. I am pretty sure that Hannah from A Clockwork Reader was talking about that one and so I'm really excited to read something from Ocean Vong, especially since EKG thinks that this is just the bee's knees. My friend Britt from Basically Brit named this as her favorite book of the year last year. And I immediately was like, say less girl. So I went out, I purchased the book and that is uh, Just Kids by Patti Smith. This is a little bit of a memoir and it is capturing the 60s and 70s of New York as well as a love story. So let me go ahead and read you a little bit of the flap. It was the summer of love and riots, the summer when a chance encounter in Brooklyn led two young people on a path of art, devotion, and initiation. Just Kids begins as a love story and ends as an elegy. It serves as a salute to New York City during the late 60s and 70s and to its rich and poor, its hustlers and hellions. Hellions? I have no idea if I'm saying that word right, okay. Next up, I have a book that I have seen everywhere, specifically on Bookstagram. By the way, if you don't follow me, you can follow me. My name is just Alexandra, I think underscore Roslyn. I do post quite frequently over there. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't post quite frequently over there, but I want to. It's like a goal for 2022. But I've seen this everywhere over on Bookstagram and I just really, really wanted to check it out. So the book is Open Water and this is by Caleb Azuma Nelson. I really hope I'm saying the name correctly. And this is a love story between two people who meet, I think in a London pub. I think it's just a traditional love story of them wanting to be together, but facing a lot of obstacles in life. But I've heard that the writing in this one specifically is really spectacular and that Nelson really does a fantastic job at weaving a really realistic portrayal of two people who are struggling to make it work in a world that seems to be tearing them apart. I'm a sucker for love stories, okay? So as soon as I heard that this was a beautiful love story, 
I mean, I was in, I was sold. Next one is uh, The Death of Vivek Oji, and this is by Akawe Amezi, and this is a thriller, but I don't know anything else aside from that. This was on so many people's favorites lists last year, and what ended up happening was I had so much fun watching people's favorite lists that I just ended up binging all of their favorites lists. I don't know anything about it, I just know that it is supposed to be like a literary thriller, and that everybody on booktube seems to love it. And you know what? I trust booktube. So I'm gonna read it this spring. Yes. Okay, following right along with the trend of reading people's favorites, we've got Lonely Castle in the Mirror, and this is by Sujimura. I hope I'm saying that right. I found this from Allison from Allison's Pages. I have discovered her channel, and I wanna be like her bestie. This channel is amazing. Allison is so filled with life. She has like this very vivacious personality, and she's just like infectious. Like you, you want to be her bestie friend. Like I dare you go to her channel and tell me that you don't immediately want to be like her bestie and talk about books with her. This was her favorite book of the year. I think it was tied with another book, Crying in H Mart, I'm pretty sure, which I own. And she actually got a tattoo based on this book. And like, as soon as I saw that, I was like, okay, girl, like I have to read this. Also, I think it's hilarious that I'm talking about all of these videos because I never comment on videos. I'm actually low key, really, really shy. And I'm horrible at commenting. This particular book is adult fiction, although a lot of people say that it reads a little bit more like a young adult, so I don't really know the age. But it's actually following seven children who stop going to school in Tokyo, and one of the girls actually sees a mirror in her room start to glow. And so, like any sane, rational person, she decides to uh, touch the mirror, and it becomes a portal and leads her to a magical world where there is a castle. Like, I mean, that's enough. Just hearing that, I'm like, yes, I wanna read it. It gets better because once she's in the castle, she discovers that if she can find this like magical key, she gets a secret wish. I think that this is going to have a lot of really important commentary actually, I'm assuming on being lonely, just like a shot in the dark. Also, can we just take a moment? This stunning cover was designed by Anna Morrison. I follow her on Instagram. The aesthetic of everything that she designs belongs in the Louvre, you know what I'm saying? Like, I am the biggest fan. I actually kind of wanna read all of the books that she has designed just because she's designed it. Like, they are so pretty, it looks like eye candy. Also, I follow her on Instagram and I made like a whole post about how much I love her and she follows me now? So maybe we're gonna be like best friends, I don't know. The next book is a book that, you guessed it, I found from someone's favorites and that would be Sunny from Sunny's Book Nook. I love their channel. I love Sunny so much. Also, Sunny runs a podcast and you can absolutely tell this because their audio is so good. They are so good at describing every single book and it just sounds like you're listening to a podcast while watching a YouTube video. Like, I, I can't explain it. I love Sunny's channel. Please check them out. And I love Sunny's taste. And this was their favorite book of the year. It's called The Divines by Ellie Eaton. It's a dog hair. This particular book is a literary fiction and it is adult. And this book was described by Sunny as a portrayal of girlhood. So we are following our main protagonist. What, what's her name? I don't know. Josephine, who is reflecting back on her time at this all girls boarding school. I think the reflections are about all of the complications of female friendships in your youth. I'm excited to kind of like delve into it and see if I have similar thoughts, but also I just like love Sunny so much. So like I needed any book that they recommended on this list. And I went with the divines. Next up is a book that I found from another booktube. Booktuber, okay. And this one is from Mel Reads. She's one of my favorite people to binge. I just like love her personality so much. Again, I've never commented on a single video because I'm shy. This book was actually in a 24 hour thon that she did. I will link it down below. And that is going to be My Body by Emily Redajowski. This is a nonfiction and it is a work of essays. So Emily is a model and it's discussing her body as it has been portrayed and consumed by the media. And the way Mel was really describing this book, she says that it's really impactful. Thank you, Mel, for this recommendation. She didn't know if she was recommending it to me, but she, she was. 
So the next book I want to read though is The Paris Apartment and this is by Lucy Folly. It actually comes out I think February 22nd. This is a book that kind of gives me like lock every doorway vibes from Riley Sager. It is following a girl who wants a fresh start so she goes to Paris to stay in her brother's apartment but when she gets there she cannot find her brother. And all of the neighbors in this like Paris apartment complex are acting sketchy as fuck. And the longer she's there, the more she's like, wait, where the heck is my brother? Which would have been my first thought, but you know, different strokes for different folks. I'm actually reading this for Gabby's book club. I'm so excited. You guys, I love Gabby. I love Gabby so much. And I had like the best time discussing For Your Own Good by Samantha Downing with her and with Kayla on Kayla's book channel. And as soon as she was like, hey, do you wanna like co-host this with me? I was like, girl, say less. Like I love Gabby so much. I'm gonna go ahead and link her channel down below. If you wanna read this book and then discuss it with us for Gabby's book club, please do. I would love to see you. Gabby would love to see you too and I'm just really excited like let's let's go Lucy Folly you know and then the final book that I definitely want to read this spring is going to be Keeper of the Lost Cities Exile which is the second book in Shannon Messenger's Keeper of the Lost Cities series I'm reading this one with my friend Ami we're just kind of making our way through the series together and I'm really excited like she's actually already read all the books so this is like a reread for her but it's the first time I'm reading it and if you didn't know I'm obsessed with the first book in the series this first book is following Sophie who discovers that she has like magical abilities and she follows a mysterious guy named Fitz. He takes her to this magical other world. I don't want to give too much away. That is the number one middle grade that I really, really want to get to. Yes. I also want to get to quite a few other books. I recently made a 22 books I would like to read in 2022. I will just be picking books from that list throughout the entire year. And a lot of those books are also included in my spring TBR. I just didn't want to repeat a lot of titles because I didn't want my videos to be like super redundant. So if you are interested in learning more books that I would like to pick up this spring, you can check that out as well. But I think that is it you guys for this video. I am so excited for so many of these titles. Please let me know if there are any books that are new and exciting that you want to read this spring. And if you have made it to this point in the video, leave me like a spring emoji. Leave me one of the flower emojis, any flower of your choice. And once again, a huge, huge thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. I could not recommend them more. I really, really love Book of the Month. All of their information will be down below. And I think that is it for now, you guys. So until next time, book lovers, keep your head in the clouds and your heart in a book and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Always think of you when spring comes like it's something in the air at that time. Don't know why. Always dream of you when spring comes. It's like the heat on my skin takes me back to the time. Met you on